everyone. Welcome back to Chandan Logics. Today we will be going to discuss February 17th current affairs in this session and also we will be going to discuss practice questions is it clear and in our next session Evil will be going to discuss the descriptive concepts is it clear and these were the concepts actually designed and also you can consider here we will be covering all the categories like regarding banking news, international current affairs, national current affairs, even books and authors, obituaries and many more is it clear and now before going to begin our session even if you want to download free pdfs of current affairs that is soft copies so you can get it through telegram channel so have to access to through this telegram channel if there is a doubt here is a solution that just in the once you go to the description there actually will be providing one link so just click on the link and join the telegram channel so that you can get the availability of the current affair pdfs and even if you want to watch Telugu Current Affairs, go through Chandan Logic's Telugu YouTube channel. There will be uploading Telugu Current Affairs on daily basis. Is it clear? And now, let us begin our session with the practice questions. So, here comes to our first question. Let us have a glance over the question here and even along with the options. So, recently, center has been allocated rupees 2.26 crore for the Made Aram Jatra of 2022 festival. And even here, apart from the question, here you have to know and you have to remember. As we have discussed in our previous session, right? So, just to go through the points like actually this is a state festival of which of the following, that is which of the following states and as well as when it has declared as a state festival in which year? That is in the year 1998, it has declared as a state festival. And now here comes to the festival that is a significance is that this is actually the biannual that means for every two years the special festival will be taking place right and then even this is organized in which of the following state is the question and even now let us actually even discuss the answer also in the session because many of you have mentioned even to explain the answers right. So just wonder, I'll be explaining the answers and just try to give your feedback so that in our further sessions we'll be going towards based on your choices and based on the majority of a people who will be preferring like question and answer explanation in the class or else if you need like only the questions and the concept explanation because you can consider this as a mock test. Is it clear? And now if we move to the options Madhya Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and Assam. And here comes actually it is in the Mulugu district of Medaram village which is in the state of Telangana. Is it clear? So option B is your answer. And then if we move to the next concept which is regarding appointments. So as I have said that from the appointments the areas you have to focus is that first comes to about the person. Is it clear? That means a person name and previous working areas. Is it clear of a person? And even if you are more interested, achievements of the person. And then moving to the second part is all about the organization, institution, company or entity. So here comes to while we are discussing about organization, institution or company or entity. So you have to focus on the established year and next come to headquarters. So this is a static GK, you need to focus while we are covering the appointments concept based on the organization. If it is at any type of bank, is it clear? Suppose Reserve Bank of India. So you need to focus the established year and headquarters. So here it is actually about CBSC that is Central Board of Secondary Education. And here comes to the question is that recently the new chairman has been appointed for CBSC. So what is the name of the person? As I have said that for the regarding the person, these are the three areas you need to focus. And moving to the options about the new chairman name that is Sanjay Malhotra, Manoj Ahuja or Rajesh Kumar Vinith Joshi. So here actually previously the person is Manoj Sinha. But now actually Manoj Sinha's place has been occupied by replaces by Vinith Joshi. So here your answer is option D. What is your answer? Your answer is option D, Vinith Joshi. But apart from the answer as I have covered that Vinith Joshi is going to replace Manoj Ahuja. Is it clear? And now. Next if we move to the question, Maru Mahotsav is celebrated in which of the following states? Even here, the other name for Maru Mahotsav, try to mention in comment section. What is that? Other name for Maru Mahotsav 
festival as we have discussed in our previous session right so mention in comment section And now if we move to the concept, right, regarding actually in which of the following states, Haryana, Bihar, Rajasthan or Assam. So here your answer is Rajasthan. Option C is your answer. And then moving to the concept called important days. So from important days, you need to focus on the date, right. And next moving to the objective, why it is actually celebrated. First you have to know the objective. And then moving to the concept like if there is any theme considered for some of the important days, you need to focus. And then moving to the concept like the historical background. That means the started year or else you can, you can consider like the historical background. Or else even you can consider under the concept called themes and or as well as the significance. Sometimes they will be asking in the indirect format from these last three areas that is based on the historical background, significance and started year. Is it clear? This is the indirect format question. So the direct questions will be from date, objective and theme. So here comes to the question which is regarding International Childhood Cancer Day, right? And here if we move to the options when on which of the following dates a particular day has been celebrated. So here moving to the options. February 13th, February 14th, February 16th or February 15th. And then moving to the concept, the government of India has banned how many number of apps of the Chinese origin citing the security concerns. So recently, India, government of India has banned some other op, that bans with, sorry, some other apps which were regarding and the origin of China. And even actually these apps were rebranded apps because already in the year 2020, right? So already in the 2020, the government of India has banned some of the Chinese apps. But again, here China has been created the rebranded apps. So even now, government of India has cancelled and banned some of the other rebranded Chinese app. So how many like number is the question is all about. So here comes to that you have to get an overview the numerical question that is 51, 52, 53, 54 or 55. So here your answer is option D. 54 Chinese apps were banned by government of India in the year 2022. Those were actually the rebranded apps. Is it clear? And with this, we have done with our practice session. Now we'll be going to discuss the descriptive concepts and first we'll be starting with international current affairs. So actually it is in current affair regarding the country called Ukraine. But why? Right? So recently you have to come across this concept like there is actually the tensions between the two countries. Those two countries were even you can have a glance over the image here. The country called Ukraine and the country called Russia. So between these two countries actually the tensions were going to these were taking place between the two countries called Ukraine and as well as Russia. But here you need to focus why it is in current affair, why we are discussing. Because even India, that means the, our country called India also, has been given some of the suggestions for the students who were actually living in the country called Ukraine. Because of this following tensions between these two countries called Russia and Ukraine, so even India has suggested and given the guidelines for the students who were studying in the country called Ukraine. Is it clear? And now. Just have a glance actually how uh, you could consider here to the rightmost part of Ukraine, the country that is Russia. And now if we move to the concept here, what is that actually? India has been advises to the citizens that is particularly to leave the country called Ukraine. And here comes to that is which is in the category of temporarily it has advised. But why recently India has advised to its citizens including the students that means even some of the Indian citizens were also like because of work or something who has actually are living in Ukraine. So here now it has advised to leave that country permanently. The, so, sorry it is temporarily. Is it clear? So to leave Ukraine temporarily because of the increasing tensions between 
Russia and Ukraine. So here for the security purpose of our Indian citizens and the students who were actually living there that is in the country called Ukraine. So here to protect them, the government of India recently advises to leave temporarily that place. Is it clear? And even it has also advised to avoid non-essential travels to and within the country because there were actually more attacks and some of the tensions between attacks and the wars taking between the Ukraine and Russia. <coughs> Sorry, so because of this reason, here recently India has even gave, gave the some of the advices even to leave that country temporarily. And also, Indian nationals were also requested to keep the embassy informed, that is, about the status of their presence in UK, where they, sorry, even their present in the Ukraine. That means where they'll be staying. So the status should be up, that is, they should be updated for our government of India. So that government of India will always be in checking the status. Like how our Indian citizens were there because of these tensions, were they affecting or not? How their position is? Is it clear? So that embassy could reach them where required. Is it clear? So this is all about the India recently advises the citizens who were living in Ukraine. Right? And this is the reason just now we have discussed like Russia denies the any invasion plans. Right? So this is all about the why actually India has given the advice because of the tensions were increasing between the Russia and Ukraine. So that major objective India even has protecting our citizens who were staying there. And next moving to the government schemes. So here comes to the scheme called Kunsonim scheme. So here this Kunsonim scheme actually what is the objective and way actually in the state or union territory it has been launched. So here you have to know LAHDC. So which stands for Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council LAY, which has recently launched a particular scheme called Kunsonim scheme. So actually the main objective is that which is for the category of a persons you can see for the differently abled persons is it clear? So here what is the terminology they have used and they have considered the name for the scheme called Kunsonims, right? So here Kunsonims actually which means equal for all, fair for all and as well as which aims inclusive and accessible Ladakh. Is it clear? So that is the reason and also the consideration behind the name that is Kunsonim scheme and which is for the particularly for the differently abled persons. And now how these differently abled persons will be going to benefit under this particular scheme called Kunsonim scheme by the Ladakh. So here it is actually under this new scheme, Lay Hill Council is providing the assistive devices, technologies to, need to the needy people at the 90% subsidy. What is the objective here? At the 90% subsidy, the technology and the devices actually for the needy people, for the differently abled persons under this scheme at 90% subsidy will be provided. Is it clear? That is the main motto. And even you can consider under this 90% subsidy scheme, as we have said that some of the assistive devices, technologies, right? So here they'll be going to provide. Even the tri-scooters also, right? So for the differently abled persons, so the three, that means which were having the three wheels for a particular scooter. So that means they'll be having like some of the accessive. So here assistive needs and also you can provide, so under this particular scheme, differently abled person can also benefit the 90% subsidy. Is it clear? So this is all about the particular scheme. And next moving to the scheme called which has recently launched by the Social Justice Ministry which is for the economic empowerment of a DNTs. So here actually now we will be going to discuss about this DNTs also and also here you have to consider one more important area that is actually how this scheme will be going to benefit them right. So how many components it consists of. Actually this scheme particularly consists of the four components is it clear. And before going to discuss about all these four components, first let us have a glance over the scheme which is known as actually here. And this particular scheme is for the scheme for economic empowerment for DNTs. With the shortcut it has actually represented as a seed scheme. What is the scheme? Seed scheme. And then who has launched this particular scheme which is by the Union Minister of Social Justice and Empowerment, Dr. Virendra Kumar recently launched a 
central sector scheme whether it is any of the state government initiative no this is actually the central sector scheme is it clear and this was launched at dr ambedkar international center at new delhi and then moving to the concept here the financial outlay for this particular scheme called seed scheme is approximately 200 crore rupees and here which is to be spent over the financial and the period of 5 years how many years the scheme now will be actually in the scenario till for 5 years that is from 2022 20 sorry 2021 22 to financial year to 2025 26 is it clear so for 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 that is for the 5 more years actually the scheme will be in the presence and now here you have to know actually who were this dnts right so they were denotified or else nomadic semi nomadic tribal community people is it clear so those were known as dnts i now under this seed scheme how this dnts or else like you can say semi nomadics or nomadics right so the tribal community people how they'll be going to benefit so here they'll be going to benefit by under the four components what are the four components means the first one giving the coaching is it clear for the people even if they want to attend for any of the competitive exams and the second comes to the health insurance is it clear what is that health insurance and even providing a livelihood for this tribal communities i'm then moving to the fourth component is that providing them the financial assistance is it clear so these are the four components will be provided under this particular scheme called seed scheme is it clear which is for the dnts right and also you have to consider scheme for economic empowerment for dnts so these are actually the four components under this scheme this tribal communities will be going to benefit is it clear everyone and then next if we move to summits <coughs> sorry here comes to g20 actually government of india forms g20 secretariat in the view of india's g20 presidency but when india will hold actually g20's presidency which is of g20 from 1st of december 2022 to 30 november 2023 so here actually this will be held in india in the year 2023 so while in india it is actually taking place the edition is 18th edition the upcoming year india is going to hold the presidency even in this in this year that 2022 actually it starts in the month of december but ends that is in the year 2023 so that edition represents 18th edition is it clear and now for its appearance actually actually the government has approved the setting up of the g20 secretariat so maybe here you'll be having a doubt which is regarding g20 which is actually known as the group of 20 countries is it clear and then now here comes to your descriptive question that is try to mention in comment section two to three lines is it clear which is regarding the group of 20 countries is it clear and then now actually it is in current affair because recently government of india forms the g20 secretariat for the upcoming india is going to hold this g20 presidency right and even you can consider actually in the 2022 the g20 summit actually was will be held in bali indonesia is it clear which country here indonesia actually going to host but in the upcoming year 2023 india will be hold that is hosting this particular g20 presidency and even as we have said that government of india has formed this g20 secretariat then what is this g20 secretariat who will be present in this actually this group of 20 countries secretariat actually regarding india will be guided by an apex committee which is headed by the prime minister and even this will have the following members the first is finance minister nirmala sitaraman and next moving to home minister amit shah and external affairs minister s jay shankar and the g20 sherpa piyush goyal is it clear so these were the four actually taking part in this g20 secretariat this g20 secretariat particularly formed that because here the hidden reason is that in the year that is upcoming year india is going to hold this group of 20 presidency right and which is the edition called 18th edition while india is holding this is it clear now it is by indonesia in the year 2022 
is it clear which is 17th edition of group of 20 presidency and now if we move to banking current affairs so here comes to s bank recently s bank inaugurated one of and launches one of the program called agri infinity program what is the program agri infinity and why what is the objective so here comes to the private sector lender called s bank which has launched this agri infinity program main objective is that to improve the digital financing solutions in the food and agriculture sector ecosystem and as well as by what how it will be going to ben that is to improve this digital financing solutions in this agriculture sector and food sector which is by mentoring the entrepreneur ventures in this field and even agri fintech startups working on the financial innovations across the food and agriculture value chain right and even all the eligibles can apply to this particular program and even they can also work with the s bank for the digital solutions is it clear so there's an initiative which was bought up by the s bank that is agri tech you can consider here sorry agri infinity and then moving to the concept called the static gk here s bank established here and the headquarters moving to the established year is in 2004 and headquarters is at Mumbai Maharashtra next moving to books and authors so here comes to the title of the book and you have to concentrate on the book title right then moving to book author and then moving to the description so these are actually the three areas you need to focus and then even in the description if it is possible after the session you have to go through in detail that means if there is was any of the significant words like let us consider like liberation of Bangladesh right and even you can that is Bangladesh war of liberation of 1971 right so sometimes if you will be going through these type of concepts even you can cover the historical background also right so that will be helpful for your further preparation and you can extend your knowledge right so you can expand and many more that is the main motto even after the session some of the concepts I'll be giving for you so whenever you'll be free after listening the concepts so once you can go through those concepts also is it clear along with this because even those were a part of static GK2 and now if you can if you enter into the concept called the book and here the title is human how the United States abandoned peace and reinvented the war is it clear this is the title of the book and what actually the author describes then who is the author first author name and even if it is possible we'll be discussing the author historical background too right and then actually recently this was authored by the Samuel Mion who was actually the here the professor of the jurisprudence and which is at the law school and professor of history at the Yale University so he's the professor actually so the person has recently authored which is based on the United States abandoned peace and the reinvented war so based on what what is the actual detailed description about this book now let us discuss so this actually provocate and argues about the endless wars that US created in the past what are actually these endless wars even in the past included so even including the Vietnam War of 1955 to 1975 Korean War even the World War II 1939 to 1945 so at this development might not represent the progress at all so that is actually about these three including even these three wars also the author has described in this particular book reinvented war right and try to concentrate here after the session go through actually what is now that means what are the significances or the historical background of the Vietnam War World War II and then moving to the Korean War is it clear so once you go through and just if it is possible try to make a note or nearly four to five sentences about each and every war so that at least with all the three wars you'll be having a one glance right so whenever like uh, at least for your knowledge based purpose you have to go through and you have to explore all the areas while you're doing current affairs just enjoy the subject you have to interlink with the other subjects while the current affair concepts is it clear so here just it is in books and authors concept just you can know the title of the book and author but if you want to like in detail and you want to gain more knowledge even you can link with this subject with the history right world war two what is actually Vietnam war when it took place what are the consequences of this particular war 
right you can understand easily and this is the way and this is the procedure you need to follow while you are doing the current affairs and whenever you will be coming across the concept like any of the concept in current affairs first you have to rise in your mind the questions were why right why it is in current affair okay if it is like any of the particular scheme actually what is the objective to launch that scheme which ministry is taking part in that particular scheme and if it is necessary any forward steps were there in including that is means which is improving find the development of that particular scheme which is already in existence right so for how many years even the expand can be done so based on this how where and what like why so these w and h questions should be raised while you are doing the current affairs so that current affairs will be done easily right because many of you have mentioned that regarding how to approach current affairs how to analyze current affairs whether current affairs de dealing is difficult or not yes it is very easy it don't feel it in difficult manner current affairs is very easy like actually how you are knowing the daily day to day basis concepts like what is happening where it is happening why it is happening just you can know it right so just as a general way and general discussion you can do with current affairs and deal the current affairs in a simple format and even for and regarding the point of your examination the practice questions were important is it clear what are the concepts worst once have a discussion with your friends or family members then after that then try to attempt the practice questions so you can test yourself whether at the point the of examination i am preparing or not is it clear so this is all about our today's session and we'll be meeting in our next session until that stay tuned thank you everyone and also one more thing here if you are having any of the doubts regarding the practice questions or the descriptive concepts try to mention in comment section right so we'll be here to clarify your doubts